Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is going to be my test video to see which crop or which uh, thing you can grow in Farming Simulator 22 is gonna be the most profitable for you. Um, so I'm gonna talk about kind of the process. I'm gonna go through the test with this. Um, and I'm also gonna talk about um, what data points I'm gonna kind of gather with this. So first things first, as far as the field goes, it's gonna be 100% fertilized every time. I have the game saved right where we're at right now. This is the field size right here, just a little field. It'll make my life a little bit easier. And the point is to see what our yield is per area that's the same. So as long as we're using the same area for every crop, it'll be fine. So this field's fully fertilized, does not need pong, does not need lime. We also have all that turned off. If we go into here, we have all of this. Oh, we should, there we go, turn it all off while we're in here. There we go. Save that, so hopefully that setting stays there. Uh, so we have this all turned off intentionally. We're not running seasons intentionally because it won't change the yield. Um, because if you understand from my video about um, taking a look at the improving the yield, we know that if we have those strings turned off that we get the bonus anyways on the field. So the only things we're not gonna be doing is mulching and rolling essentially. We're gonna do everything else to keep this field um, in tip top shape for all of our crops. But as long as it's the same for all, it should be just fine. So um, yeah, now the tricky ones to test are gonna be olives and grapes, but uh, we'll we'll do what we can to test those and I'll bring you guys back in when we're putting those down on the field. But uh, yeah, so what data points are we gonna gather here? So we're gonna see when we're planting it, how much the seed cost is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the store here. Oh, we're going to here. Go into the store, look at whatever as far as purchasing seeds in here goes. I'm gonna find out which one of these is the cheapest per thousand liters. Um, and then we're gonna take however many seeds we end up using in the tank when we plant the, the crop. We're gonna see how many seeds we use and then we're gonna multiply how many seeds we use by the cost per thousand liters to get our seed cost. So that's how seed cost is gonna be calculated. I will document how much seed is used as well. So you can take a look at that as well. Um, I'm also gonna document the growth in months. We already know that actually, so I'm just gonna document that as far as it'll be in the chart that I'm gonna show you guys at the end. Um, I'm going to document the yield. When we do wheat, barley, and oats, I'm also gonna document the yield of the straw you get off the field and include that inside of our calculations. Then I'm going to document the low price, the high price, and an average price. I'm also gonna document the how much we would make if we sold it at the low price, the high price, the average price. Now, the big thing is, as far as like cost to run equipment, how much the equipment's gonna cost, because some people say, well, yeah, sugarcane, you get more, but it takes way more time and costs a lot of money. That is true. I can't, there's so many different possibilities or ways to do most of these crops that I can't possibly include every single variation of equipment that you can do and have a monetary figure on that. So I'm gonna make some notes here um, as we go through, I'm gonna make some notes on my chart to kind of talk about some of the, basically the advantages and disadvantages. Though you might make more money per area on a specific crop, it might have some fallbacks or some disadvantages to doing that crop type. So for example, I'm gonna document in my chart what the smallest planter is, so what the minimum width is um, that you can plant because obviously if you have a wider planter, it's faster. I'm also gonna document the largest planter width because obviously something like sugarcane, the largest planter I think is two meters. So just like that to note that. And then I'm gonna dark document the smallest width for a harvester and the largest width for a harvester. Um, and again, I'm not gonna use any mods. We're only gonna use base game equipment here because I can't, I can't get too far down into the weeds. Um, so I'll document that stuff to let you guys kind of think if it's really worth it. In addition to considering the growth in months um, or days, if you have one day month set um, and the seed cost, um, we'll kind of let you guys determine what you guys think is the most profitable cop crop, but I will have a distinctive winner at the very end that will show that, okay, yeah, you're gonna get more if you do you know, a harvest off of this field or a specific area, you're gonna get more money from doing a specific crop type, but it's not gonna obviously factor in all of the expenses. And my prices, as far as how much you get for selling them, I'm not gonna include the seed cost. You'll have to subtract that out in order to get the answer there. But, uh, and now fertilizer costs, I'm not gonna include that because theoretically speaking, to get two fertilizer states, the cost is gonna be the same for all crops. So if we just don't count that, it's not gonna matter because it'd be the same increase in cost um, for every crop type. So it'd be the same deficit to every crop type, if that makes sense. I will put this all on a chart at the very end. I will also, um, I think it's a Google Doc chart or it's a, um, a Google Sheet. Uh, what I will probably do is, uh, I'll probably leave a link down below in the description so you guys can access a view only copy of it. Um, that'll probably be what I will do. But yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and start just chipping away, documenting all of this. Um, I will get a loading wagon over here to pick up straw. Um, before we get started here or before we get the uh, wheat ready to harvest. But uh, yeah, we're gonna start with wheat. So as far as the crops we're gonna do, I should mention that as well. We're gonna do wheat, barley, oats, sorghum, soy, canola, sunflower, corn, sugar beets, potatoes, sugar cane, cotton, olives, and grapes. Those are all the very basic types. I'm not gonna cover grass and hay. 
um, in this video, I'm not gonna, yep. So I'm not gonna cover grass, hay, and silage, basically. Um, though I know you can make some good money off of silage, I'm not gonna cover that in this video um, as far as the test goes. And then I'm also not gonna cover poplars because poplars are gonna get wood chips off of. Um, so we're not gonna talk about those. I know you could get obviously yield and whatnot and you can get money from that, but I'm not gonna cover poplars, forestry types of stuff um, in this video. We're just gonna talk about those main crop types there that I just listed off. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll bring you guys back in when we're getting close to wrapping up. So basically when we're getting ready to do the olives and grapes test, because we're gonna have to change some things up to do those. So I will see you guys here in just a little bit. All right, so we are most of the way through the tests. Um, the results are interesting. We'll go over them after we finish our grapes and olives test here in a second, but uh, wow, they're not what I was expecting. <laughs> That's all I'll say about that. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking as far as placing our uh, orchards. We'll start with grapes again. So I wanna do obviously this whole field, but I won't, they're a little wide. So once we get the first one placed, it'll actually be pretty easy since they snap together now. But I'm thinking something like along... Oh, I'm in the way. Go figure. Let me get out of the way. Okay. Go back into here. Production. Orchards. Because I know they hang out, hang over a little bit. So I'm... Grab that. Thinking if we go right, right there. Move ourselves along here. That looks pretty darn straight. Okay, yep, so just like that. And then I'll just keep working my way across until I fill up all the all the space here. And then I will make sure that they're fully yielded, which actually I don't know how that's gonna work as far as, are they gonna still have their full yield? Okay, yeah, they're still fully fertilized, so everything should be good. And if you walk up to them, yeah, see plus 93% or 96%. Yeah, it's there it is. 96, 98. That's like right where it's been for all the other crops right there. So perfect. They have that yield bonus potential. We will just get them placed, uh, let them grow, and then I will harvest them. And then we will calculate that into what we got going on. So, okay, I will keep working on that. That's basically what I'm gonna do for the grapes and olives. I'll do that. And then I have this obviously saved right here or not here, but before I placed anything or drove anything over here. So I'll just load back in without saving and then we'll keep going from there. So I will keep working on that. I'll see you guys here in just a few minutes and we'll go over the results. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to look at the results. Now we will note a few things here. Um, there's some things that I tried to, I did actually end up accounting for the seed cost. I did subtract the seed cost off. Um, there's a few other notes that we'll make here. Now, I think that Giants redid the crops thinking about the production chains. I think they did that because I think some of these crops you will make a lot more if you actually put them through a production chain um, compared to what they're at here. Because uh, some of them, I think the winner is <laughs> just odd. Just odd. Uh, some of the winners are just odd on here. Uh, and some of the different values are just odd. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and take a look at it. I'm gonna move us over to a spreadsheet and we'll take a look at it from there. So looking at this, this is the spreadsheet, which I will leave links so you guys have access to this. So if we go starting with uh, wheat here, again, it's kind of hard. Let me actually zoom. There we go. So we have the whole spreadsheet on here at once. Um, so feel free to zoom or pause and read whatever you need to, or maybe down below if you open it up so you can look at it with me. Um, and you should be able to download it so you can edit your own values in here. So we'll just run through wheat here. So wheat and then the straw for wheat, that's what's here. Um, that's only again for the barley, wheat, oats, but wheat, the yield is 7,997 liters. That's their straw yield, which is different than the other two crops. That's the Average price for straw, a good price for straw, and the best price for straw. Now, I decided to change to these values because uh, there's actually a really good article on it. And let's be honest, you're never going to sell when the, the price is super low. And if you are, well, all you have to do, this is all, there's calculations in here. So this says six or this says 74 right now. If I change this to 100, well, it'll update. You can see it updates everything further down, but it's actually just 74. So we'll leave it there for now. So it'll update the prices in here. Uh, so these are all calculated out. So, and where I got these prices, there's a link down below in the description to a Steam article. And actually, let me get those moved to side that just bother me. Uh, there's a Steam article that will explain how they found all of this stuff in the XML. Uh, so it's from the XML of the game, not from me studying the game or anything like that. So these prices should be extremely accurate. Uh, okay, so 7,997 liters. Average price, good price, best price. So average 71, 12, 99. Now that is including straw. This is if you sell without starch. I know it's misleading. I should have switched those with the two. I should have switched four and five there. But the higher price there for that is with straw being sold. That's without straw being sold. Then we have the good or good price and best price. And then over here we have the smallest planter width, base game equipment only, largest planter width. 
the smallest plant or smallest harvester width base game only again largest harvester width uh that's how many grow time in months so if you have your if you have seasons turned off um it'll be and you set it to one day months that'll be seven days then that's the seed cost because that's the amount of seeds used and all of these here all the way down to here will multiply by certain amounts over here uh so seed price 800 if it's a crop that needs regular seed it will multiply it by it will divide this by a thousand to get how many you know because that's the price per thousand liters so if you wanted to change that to well maybe you get seeds cheaper it'll go through and calculate it all and subtract different prices in here but we're gonna leave it at 800 uh, for now because that's basically the store price so yeah so it has all that stuff in there um now let's start talking about some different stuff different advantages disadvantages to different things so if we look over here actually at the sale average um the winner let's see i think down here is yeah right here 11 grand is going to be sugar beets of all things sugar beets followed by potatoes close second sugar beets and potatoes were the winners um i think in every category here um then past that the next one up on the list is actually going to be uh, cotton, which is not not really surprising to be fair, but cotton's gonna be next on that list. And then um, after cotton, we actually have olives, and then we're gonna hit sugarcane, um, and then grapes, and then past that, we're gonna start hitting all of our crops up here. So out of like the basic, the more basic crop types, um, your best is gonna be, I believe, was soy. Soy is pretty high up. Not quite the winner though. Sorghum it looks like is the winner here. But then if you go to better prices, soy, you can get a better price. Soy is the best in this column. Um, but yeah, always sugar beets one though, very strangely, and followed by potatoes. But um, you can go through here. So the big change I think is sugar cane did not win out this year, so a lot of people are probably never going to touch it. Um, but uh, to be fair, um, with sugar cane, to note a couple of things there, um, you can now make sugar, which I think is going to be a lot more profitable for you. Anyways, um, now down here, let's talk about a few things down here in my notes. So first off, sugar cane. Here's the advantage of sugarcane as well. Sugarcane does not have to be replanted. So sugarcane, grapes, and olives don't need replanting because you're placing down the uh, you're placing down the vineyards for the grapes and olives. Now, another thing to note, this is how much it costs for me to place um, the total of 15 rows for each of the grapes and the olives. That obviously is not subtracted out of their harvest income because that would be it would be a huge negative. But just note that there's a huge upfront cost for those. Now, sugarcane, this is the seed price I calculated because you can buy sugarcane seeds in the store at that rate. Potatoes, I used the uh, the price average for potatoes, excuse me, um, for their seed price because, well, after you do your first round of potatoes, um, you will be able to use that. So, um, but even then, even with sugarcane being that low price, you can see sugarcane is still at uh, 1,051 to plant. Now, if you use regular seed to plant sugarcane, your seeding cost just went up to 4,400 bucks, you can see over there. So um, just be aware of that. But yeah, so that's a couple notes. Um, there, obviously there's no plant width for um, olives and grapes. Um, if we go over to olives and grapes, there's not really a harvester width. It's just one row. So I put a has asterisk next to the one there. And for potatoes here, there's an asterisk next to this because it doesn't really give you a width that it tells you, at least for the uh, big harvester. It doesn't give you a width, at least in the description. So I just estimated at three and called it good there. But otherwise, everything else in here should be fairly accurate, good to go for you. So um, at the end of the day, sugar beets one. But if you're not doing sugar beets and you're doing a basic, as far as like basic grain crop types, uh, soybean is going to be your winner just barely oats potentially could get up there that's your best price though uh, but if we go down here to sell good you're still just up ahead with uh, soy so soy is good oats are doing a lot better now uh, well that's actually also to include selling the straw if you don't sell the straw you're not going to deal with straw then you have to deal with this price down here um, so past that soy is actually a really good contender followed by it looks like corn did decent uh, sunflower did decent but yeah there's there's a lot of values in here um and again you can adjust all the prices in here and everything should calculate out if you download your own copy of this um and this is all a normal economy by the way so if you plan a different economy well that steam article that's linked down below you can enter your own prices in here um as far as over here and it'll it'll give you a more updated set for what you're looking at in your game and what prices to look for so there you guys go um if you guys enjoyed this video uh please drop a like down below if you haven't already and we'll go back over to the game here uh make sure you guys hit that subscribe button up on the screen to join the farmer cop channel and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any future videos i may post this has been farmer cop thank you guys for coming and for watching